Hey guys, this is OneForOneSource.com, and this is going to be my third ever video article on DE Nuke. And this video article is mainly going to be about um, rushing um, the inner bomb site, um, focusing on kind of what I think is the best um, area to hit, whether it be squeaky outside ramp, um, and then discussing really how to how to catch rotations, flanks, whatnot. Um, after you do take in the site, and I think I'm just gonna give some some general ideas as to I think post plan ideas, um, how you should be holding the site, uh, and w what you should be mainly concerned with. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and explain some things on the CT side um, about how you can really stop upper rushes because I think um, if teams do them right, which hopefully um, I will show you how to do them right, that they can be very difficult to stop. So I'm going to give you some ideas to do that. Um, as well as furthermore, I'd like to um, kind of discuss how the effect of, of rushes um, have on, on the rest of the match. Like say, um, you know, if a team is setting up to stop your rush because they know it's coming based on spawns, um, how you can kind of adapt and, and get, get additional rounds um, based on knowing that the, you think they're going to adapt. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started here. There's a lot to talk about. Um, first off, um, what I'm going to say is that the, the spawns that, that I like to do with this, uh, do rushes with, is obviously, I mean, the best, this best one you can get. And usually um, the way this looks is there's a guy right where I'm standing right here. Um, there's two more right here. And all that really matters is the first three guys, the guys that are, that are in the back. It doesn't matter so much as if they have great spawns. Um, the first three guys is what matters the most. If, you know, if the last two guys are, are way back here, it's not a big deal. You can still do the rush. Um, what's most important is having a guy in this first position here. And, and this first guy, the guy in this first position is always going to be your flasher. Um, and then the rest of these guys is I'm going to kind of show, show you um, in detail in a little bit here. But um, just a note I'd like to make is that I think every team um, or every T side rather on, on nuke you should try rushing I'd say at least once because uh, at least once you're gonna get a good spawn um, I mean obviously with the rotation um, whether you're playing nine or twelve rounds you may get the same spawn three or four times and I think in most cases you want the first time you get a good spawn you want to try a rush um, whether it be the first round fourth round whatever the first time you get that spawn I think you want to try a rush so that um, you know because I think it rushes, especially when you have great spawns, um, if they don't have such great of spawns, you have a very good chance of winning a round. Um, so you definitely want to take advantage of that. And, you know, if you win the, f the first time you rush, um, hopefully you'll be able to do that um, again on the second, third, and fourth times you get those spawns. Um, so, you know, just if you can just get your rushes down on this map, you can get four rounds on T-side, you know, which which is, is good. And then considering you have, you know, either five or, or eight more rounds to work with, you know, you can you can really end up having some really good T-sides on Nuke um, if you can get your rushes down. Um, so again, um, like I said, the spawns are, are like this. You obviously want to have the best possible spawns, okay? And, and like I said, the first guy um, is always going to be your flasher, okay? Um, now, keep in mind, this isn't this isn't something you have to stick to, you know, you, ha you don't have to do this, this flash by flash or you know exactly how I do it um, and there's definitely going to be room room um, to to change stuff around and, and that's what I do too I mean I, I this is kind of like a template I work with and then if I see st stuff that on the other team is doing um, that I want to adapt to that and and change stuff then I then I mix it up but this is kind of kind of what I do by default um, on these rushes here so let's say I'm the first spawn and I'm, I'm the first flasher okay um, I, or I'm the only flasher um, for the most part okay uh, my main concern is going to be to draw attention to me in the hut um, and kind of flash the guy's mini on the floor here so that our main kind of force can get out squeaky, okay? I'm really not even going to come out hut. I'm just pulling attention to me. I've talked to this about I talked about this in commentaries before, but I'm not kind of going to kind of give in-depth reasoning to um, why I do it, okay? Um, now, the reason why I like coming out squeaky more... Um, is that I think just the angles and and the timing is is quite a bit better. Meaning that um, most of the the players that come play inner in the early round, I'd say the majority of them come through up this ladder and into the site. Occasionally there'll be guys coming from the mini, um, but they take slightly longer to get there as well as we may be able to take care of them with just one flash. These guys coming up the ladder are more difficult to take care of um, with flashes because they can dodge flashes, they can see them coming, and they get there quite a bit earlier than the guy coming mini does. Um, and, and not to mention these guys that are uh, I felt like an idiot there, but anyhow, um, the guys that are coming up the tower, they have they they have 
I think, better spots early in the round. They can get um, behind this forklift right here. They can get um, in this spot right here, which I like to call Mustang since he plays it all the time. Um, or he can just, er, the guy coming down here can, can just play in this spot too. So there's a lot of positions they can get into if they go up the ladder, okay? Now, if they come through the squeaky door, uh, I'm sorry, if they come through the mini garage here, I looking towards the squeaky door they don't have a, as many options I mean they, they would have to run across here to get into any of those spots um, they're more out in the open and not to mention they get like I said before they get there later so this whole area is it, we can flash this area before he gets here um, given that he doesn't have the best spawn possible okay I, you know if he gets a really good spawn he's gonna get up in this area before our flash pops um, but uh, you know on an, on a uh, on an average spawn, we're going to be able to flash this guy coming through this area. So that's why I like I like sending our main force out squeaky um, so that we can flash this guy off and then get into better positions that we can take down the guys playing the site and then end up here. Okay? So like I said, um, the flasher is going to come up here. What I, I generally do when I'm the flasher, I get up right here and then I... I quickly, as, as soon as I get to that spot, I throw my flash into the mini garage right there. So it's going to... It's going to blind a guy turning the corner into the mini garage. Hopefully, hit him, hit him for a good 3-4 seconds. It'll give us enough, enough time to cross into the site, get into a decent positions towards the vents there. Okay. So, again, I'm going to come up here. I throw my one flash towards mini. And then what I, I usually do is this is just mainly to pull attention to me, even though I'm not going to come out hut in most cases. Again, you know, don't stick to this um, exactly. You know, in some cases, it may be good for me to come out hut if, if I notice that they're never playing this area right here or, you know, they're, they're, if, if they know the way that I'm, I'm going to take this. You know, I, I obviously don't want to be very predictable, so I'm going to, you know, change it up and come out here. But anyhow. So one flash out the squeaky, and then again, I want to try to pull attention to me by throwing maybe like a flash on the ground, um, and then I can nade the forklift from there. That nade actually does pretty good damage to the guy playing forklift, so, you know, if I can take half his health down, that's that's a big plus for us. And then uh, I kind of smoke towards the hut again to pull attention to me, okay? And then after that, you know, I, I'm going to assist, okay? Now, whether the, that is best served by me going back and just watching the uh, ramp flank directly if they're very flank happy, or if, if it's, you know, best for me to come out here, since I have a smoke down right here, here. You know, I think it'll be pretty safe to come right here, help with the mini garage, help with any guys um, boosted up on these corners, um, uh, or you know, if there's guys in the vents right there, I can help. Okay, but I'm not going to come out the hut in most cases here because uh, you know, in most cases, there's going to be guys coming uh, coming up this ladder and just posting up on the hut. Okay, um, so you know, unless they're calling, my teammates are saying, you know the guy tower or whatever um, uh, most of the times I'm just gonna stay in the hut and assist from other other spots where I think I'm less likely to be posted up on. Okay. Um, now these guys coming out squeaky, I haven't talked about them yet, but these are pretty much like the the next three best spawners, okay? So the best spawner is obviously going to be the flasher. The next three best spawners are going to come right out here, um, you know, take the fastest angle to get into the squeaky door, and then just immediately come out right here, okay? Now one option um, that I do occasionally here, if I'm the first spawner um, to come out the squeaky door, is I'll, I'll bank a flash off, that was wasn't that great of flash but you know I'll come up right up here flash right here wait for that that flash to pop then turn this corner okay that was slightly slow but you get you get the point here um, that it you know if I'm feeling pretty confident that there's not gonna be anybody close here that's not that is not blind then I, I, I feel like I can come out here flash this site um, you know then come out here okay when I'm the lead guy right here, I like to try to check this this angle as much as possible, and then come out and swing out right here, kill any guys in the site, and then the um, forklift. Okay, um, and then I'm gonna have I'm gonna have nades and smokes left at that point, and a lot of times I'll, I'll either have the bomb or the guy behind me will have the bomb. At that point, we just kind of want to try to isolate the tower and isolate areas that that people are gonna rotate to. Okay, and it kind of same same thing goes for the second and third guys out. Though the, these guys aren't gonna be worried about flashing. Um, you know, to get into the site. Once they get into the site, um, they want to kind of get into these corners right here. I think these are very good spots to help um, to to get into, to block flashes with, to to hold the bomb post spawn. I think both these corners, this one um, and this one, are good spots to get into. Okay, so the kind of the, the second and third guys coming out. They want to get into these corners right here, and then just start. They want to start streaming flashes towards the mini garage, um, and and nading tower. You know, if if a guy's up there, and just keeping keep this held off, keep this area held off until we can safely get the bomb planted. Okay, so you know if if flashes are being streamed in this mini, we we feel pretty comfortable being able to plan on the front side like I am like I'm right here. Okay, you know, and I think this is a better spot to watch it from since we're sending mo most of our guys out squeaky. There's no reason for us to plan it for tower. Most cases we want to be planning it right here, not on the opposite edge so it's the guys coming out squeaky that aren't planting the bomb it's their responsibility just to stream flashes right here okay and and just you know 
this guy doesn't even have to come out very far. Say it's the third guy. He can just sit right in this corner, stream flash into here, switch back. Um, that was obviously a terrible flash, but switch back between um, looking at mini and tower. And then these guys can also watch the vents, too. And in most cases, you don't want to break the vents. Um, you know, you want to know when they're coming up. They have to break the vents. Once you hear the vent break, you know, you can look at it. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of things that can be covered right here, and you can do it relatively safely. Um, and obviously, you can nade tower, and you, and I think these are just great post plant spots, um, you know, as opposed to, you know, playing playing forklift. And, and this is another thing about coming out HUD. If, if you come out this way, um, you know, and, and you do manage to get a guy, you know, maybe you kill a guy right here, and, and you're in this area, you're just kind of stuck in the open here. You really have nowhere to go. And what's going to happen a lot of times is people are going to come up, you know, I, I, I am a ramp rotator, and I do this a lot, and I get a lot of kills doing it. You know, I come up right here, I flash close I come down here and there's often you know two guys down here that are completely blind just from that one flash and I'll be able to get killed so that, you know that's the reason why I don't like coming out hut because there's just there's not a whole lot of options when you come out here I mean obviously you can go to forklift but again you're kind of open from from the guy coming at vents um, even open for mini a little bit um, and the hut flank and and you know flashes from tower so you know I don't think it's a very great spot um, to go into um, so a couple things that you you want to be worried about um, is people double nading um, into the hut okay and and usually what happens is at the very beginning of the round you know if people are coming down here and I'm, I'm gonna talk about this a little bit later is when they're double nading the hut um, and they're, they're holding off the hut rush okay or or pre flashing at the very least okay now if they start doing that um, most of the time it's it's before you get in there because you're taking your time um, and and flashing here and then flashing here and by that time the nades the nades are going to be popping while you're pretty much on your first flash okay but if you notice that they're not doing any of that if they're not nading hut if they're not um, flashing it in that case I think it's okay for you to come out hut you know once in a while you know instead of sending all three guys out squeaky um, you know and and only just one hut maybe send two two out hut right away forget the flash on mini and just send two out hut and post up on this tower you know it maybe may happen that you get a better spawn and you'll be able to get kill guys that are mid-air flying up the ladder okay so you know if you notice that they're not doing their pre nades it, you need to take advantage of that by coming out the hut okay um, now one thing I didn't talk about yet is the the fifth guy now I talked about usually I send three guys out squeaky uh, you know occasionally I'll send four guys out squeaky if I think it's best with uh, the one guy in hut obviously but the fi the fifth guy what I generally like to do with him is just kind of pull him around different places uh, you know sometimes maybe I'll send him even out the hut um, occasionally ramp have him flank the tower but most cases I, I think I, I probably send them outside okay and the reason for that is just because I'm trying to draw attention um, to guys outside so it's easier for our guys to come um, through the squeaky because generally what will happen is there'll be an opera or something outside um, and a guy mini okay so if this guy can go outside and he can stream two flashes right off the bat outside obviously it's gonna probably pull attention off the opera to, to look at the guys outside and maybe even the mini players so that's gonna be two guys focusing on on one our one guy outside instead of focusing on our three guys coming out squeaky so it's gonna be making make it easier for them to come out squeaky and this guy is just you know cautious he's not just full out rushing obviously if there's an op he doesn't want to rush out into it um, but you know, if if he if he gets calls from teammates that you know he needs to come quick, he's gonna flank right here, try to get in the mini, get any kills on the guys playing right here, or if there's an opper, you know, playing back, you know, flash him and maybe try to push him up. Um, but you know, this guy's just just trying to be an annoyance, you know, um, and he doesn't necessarily have to go outside. Like I said, he can go ramp, um, but he's just trying to be an annoyance, pull attention to him elsewhere, um, pull attention off our rushers. Okay. Um, one other thing that I'd like to mention here is about this opera outside. Is that um, I, there's some teams that defend the squeaky rush by bringing ga a guy immediately out to this angle of their their opera and posting on the squeaky door. Okay, now if on the first round, like I said, I like starting out ri with rushes when you get the best spawn. But on the first time that you do your your upper rush spawn, say there's an opera posted up just like I am right here on the squeaky door. Um, what you want to do the next time you have that spawn, because, you know, this guy's going to get two or three kills. Uh, you know, if, if a guy sets up like this, um, you know, and this is going to be incorporated when I talk about the CT side, you know, he, he's going to get a lot of kills on the squeaky because, you know, it's just an open shot. He's not going to be flashed. You know, guys just running into his crosshair. So he's obviously going to get two, a, a lot of kills in that spot. So instead of running that strat again by sending guys out squeaky, um, like I said, one option before was, you know, to send guys out hut instead of squeaky if they're not doing their prenates. But another thing that you can do, 
is the next time you get that spawn, just have a guy post up right here with an op. Um, and by the time, you know, that guy's eventually going to have to rotate back. And, I, I, you know, you can say with pretty good confidence if they know what they're doing spawn-wise, um, which most people tend to do these days is, you know, they know at the higher levels at, at especially that they know, you know, when the spawns are coming. So that they're going to go to that spot. So you can come here fairly confident knowing that the guy's going to be on the, the right side here. And you can come out here and just get a free pick on the guy um, looking towards Squeaky here. Um, so, you know, and that'll open up the round. And then, you know, after that point, maybe you could rush Squeaky or, you know, explode outside. Um, but y that would be a good a adaptation to make when when you know that they're uh, kind of posting up on the Squeaky door here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about the CT side now. I did say a couple things. I'm just going to stress them a little bit more, um, say a little bit more about them. Um, um, I, I don't think I have to say more about that uh, op spot here. Um, obviously, this is a very good spot to hold it if team is rushing Squeaky on you. Um, have you know an opper with the best spawn get to this spot right here post up okay you're going to be able to get a lot of kills on guys coming out there okay um, and you know like I said that is a little bit risky because if they in instead of um, instead of going inside if they go outside and post up on you you know you're kind of pinned down right here they, kn they probably know where you are you're pinned down right here there's not a whole lot you can do except um, just rely on your shot there um, as for holding upper um, one second Okay, as for holding upper, obviously you want to be prenating in the HUD. And now we've talked about this before. Um, you want to come up here um, and have try to try to have two guys down here prenating the HUD. Prenating, I think, is better than flashing because you know you can really use your flashes later in the round. Um, you know when you're holding upper, so you don't want to be wasting your flashes then. Okay, you want to save your flashes later on the round. And nades will hold off the rush, or at least they'll hold it, hold it off long enough for you to get in position. Okay, so if you can nade and then you go to your spot, say it's right here. Um, you know if if they do full out rush, you're gonna kill them. If they don't full out rush, um, because of the nades, you're st you're gonna be able to get in position. So obviously that's a good thing. Um, for you to be double nading it, single nading is not enough. I don't think you you know you want to be coming up towards here. Um, and obviously, use, use your knowledge of spawn rotations. If if you know on a, you know second round, um, you know they hit upper on the sixth round, you know be ready for it. So so instead of sending maybe two ramp that round, be sure that you send three upper. Okay, so send two up here maybe have them double nade the um, the hut and then come down have your your other good your spawner um, playing inside come through here. Okay, and that's that's one thing um, to note. Um, if if you have multiple guys playing inside. And you know it's going to be an upper rush this round. I would say send your best spawner um, to Squeaky Door to through the mini uh, into the Squeaky Door because he'll be able to get in a position before they get there. And you know just get him up right here, have him post up on the Squeaky, um, and and he'll be able to plow down. You know with a lot of headshots at at, at this level, um, plow down a lot of guys coming out with with you know flashes in their hands and whatnot, just opening door that not not knowing what hit them. Um, and then a lot of times it's just going to be lined up and you'll be able to get a ton of them. Um, so yeah, like you're, you, when you're expecting an upper rush, send your best spawner through here. Um, I think that's that's probably your best option. Um, like I said, yeah, double nades, uh, op in the warehouse, and uh, best best spawn through the mini. Um, so that's gonna be it for uh, this commentary. Uh, I'm sorry, video article. Um, again, I encourage more feedback. Uh, and I, actually, if you guys want to really discuss this topic further, um, any ideas um, about upper rushes that you guys do, um, that's, you know, this is obviously what I think uh, works best for me. Um, if you guys have other opinions, go ahead, feel free to post them. So uh, that's going to be it, and we'll see you guys next time.